No one knows what the future holds, but we can take what we've learned during the pandemic to prepare buildings for future conditions, including health emergencies and natural disasters. The Johnson Controls Flexible Facility Solution modernizes critical building systems with pre-designed operating strategies and equipment configurations that adapt to new requirements so you can keep your staff and visitors safe and healthy regardless of conditions. So what does that look like? Let's give an example using a municipal civic center. Midnight. It's another day at a mixed-use municipal building in a community where COVID-19 cases continue to slowly decrease with an occasional flare-up making vigilance still important. The building is ventilated at a reduced rate while in unoccupied ventilation mode and disinfectant lights continue to help disinfect the air in the library, council chamber, treasurer's office, building permits department, and other spaces. 5 a.m. The control system increases outdoor air and exhaust air to maximum flow rates. It also increases room temperatures and humidity, which reduces the transfer of the coronavirus. 6 a.m. The control system starts to bring room temperatures back to normal conditions for occupancy. 7 a.m. The building opens with staff and community members entering the building securely and safely, focused on community affairs. They are screened at the entrance with thermal scanning cameras. Anyone with an elevated skin temperature waits for 20 minutes in a nearby isolation room maintaining negative pressure to avoid infecting others. If a second temperature measurement indicates a fever, the individual is directed to check with their health professional and is sent home. 9 a.m. The occupant detection system installed to enforce social distancing and support contact tracing for health purposes is also used to adjust ventilation rates to actual space occupancy throughout the day. This assures adequate ventilation while reducing unnecessary energy use and cost. 10 a.m. The air quality monitoring application integrated with a weather forecast site indicates elevated particulate pollution levels due to unusually high pollen count and the facility director gets an alarm message. Despite being off-site, the facility director uses a mobile application to select an outdoor air pollution mode that reduces ventilation rates but increases filtration using high-performance filters installed to maintain adequate indoor environmental quality. 11 a.m. The building manager is notified of potential flooding. There has been heavy rain in the past few days, and so the facility director checks the backup generator testing and maintenance compliance report to confirm readiness and prepare the facility to operate on emergency standby power. 12 p.m. The municipal building is notified that a nearby neighborhood is being evacuated due to flooding and the community event room will be used as an emergency shelter. The thermal sensing cameras at the Civic Center entrance will help screen incoming community members for elevated temperatures and other symptoms. Ventilation and filtration is increased in the Civic Center as an extra precaution. 1 p.m. The local utility is warning of potential grid outages due to the rising flood water impacting the pumping station. The solar PV and electric battery system, which normally operate to improve sustainability and maximize utility incentives, will instead be used to improve resiliency during a potential grid outage. 3 p.m. The electric grid goes out and the facility switches to backup power generation, which maintains power for critical services such as HVAC and lighting. 4 p.m. With an increased electrical demand for charging mobile devices, refrigerating food and other emergency shelter uses, the building manager initiates a demand reduction sequence for non-critical loads dimming lights and adjusting temperatures, which is normally used to capture utility demand response incentives. 7 p.m. The municipal building is busy with evening events. The local Toastmasters Club is meeting, students are studying in the library, and there is a city council meeting in the chambers room, and the access control system helps keep guests limited to appropriate areas of the building. Discussion focuses on how the city can leverage federal stimulus funding and performance-based contracting to meet ASHRAE standards to help keep other public buildings safe while improving the energy efficiency and resiliency. 10 p.m. Because of the amount of regular traffic and confirmation of elevated temperatures at the entrance isolation room, 
After unoccupied conditions are confirmed by the control system, the controls again increase ventilation and the space is set for disinfectant light treatment, which helps cleanse viral contamination on surfaces. 11 p.m. The facility again increases ventilation to flush the civic center buildings when unoccupied and disinfectant lighting is set to do its work overnight to help treat viral contamination. This is just one example of how the flexible facilities solution can help municipalities implement rapid infrastructure renewal to assure safe, efficient, and resilient operations and flexible emergency response. Johnson Controls, the power behind your mission.